there are very few people from Britain who have never heard of Sir Francis Drake. Gallant tells of his exploits from around the globe and about how for nearly 30 years he was the scourge of the Spanish, which embedded him into our folklore. And nowhere more prevalently than here, in his hometown of Plymouth. Drake came from rather humble beginnings as the son of a Protestant farmer here in Tavistock. His exact birth date is unknown, but falls somewhere between 1540 and 1544. Within the first 10 years of his life, his family was caught in the middle of the Prebrook Rebellion and fled to Kent. When Drake was 18, he enlisted in the Hawkins family fleet and underwent several voyages with his second cousin, the infamous John Hawkins. This square served to memorialise John Hawkins, who is deemed the first British slave trader. In 1564, he and Drake sailed to West Africa to acquire slaves to sell in Venezuela, privateering as they went, reported profit of 60%. In 1567, they set sail again, but ran afoul of the Spanish fleet, set down to put the Mexican independent movement, and all but two of John Hawkins' fleet was destroyed. This was to become known as the Battle of San Juan de Ulua. This event tempered Drake's feelings towards the Spanish something that he would go on to demonstrate in the next 20 years of his life. After acquiring a small fleet, and while the previous voyage may have been a failure, the boldness of their actions brought Drake to the attention of the very top. In 1572, Queen Elizabeth bestowed a privateering commission, the perfect opportunity to raid the Spanish and repay them for the Battle of San Juan de Ulla. Setting forth across the Atlantic, his first action was to raid Nombre de Dio, a major call in the Spanish treasure fleet located in what is now known as Panama. And though they failed to occupy the fort, they saw success when raiding a mule train carrying silver and he returned to England with a fortune. Changing circumstances at home resulted in a change in tack. Queen Elizabeth and King Philip II had signed a temporary truce. By 1575, Drake found himself in the service of the Earl of Essex and participated in the Rathlin Island Massacre in Ireland. Two years later, Drake was chosen to lead an expedition to circumnavigate the globe and continue raiding the Spanish as they went, departing with his main ship, the Pelican, later renamed the Golden Hind, and four others he hugged the west coast of Africa and picked up a sixth ship, a captured Portuguese ship, the Santa Maria, now renamed Mary. The voyage to reach the Straits of Magellan was a harsh one. Two ships, the Christopher and the Swan were scuttled, perhaps sunk due to the loss of crew following the transatlantic crossing. Around Argentina, the fleet discovered the Mary was rotting and burned the ship. Passing through the strait and reaching the Pacific took a further toll on the fleet as they were beset by heavy storms which sank the Marigold and forced Elizabeth to return to England. With only the renamed Golden Hind remaining, the crew struck success in form of a Spanish treasure ship near Lima, which con contained 25,000 pesos or pieces of eight, around 7 million today. Another ship, nicknamed Carga Fuego, was captured with a prize of 36 kilograms of gold and its 26 tons of silver. With this success, the crew spent some time in California, named Nova Albion by Drake, to repair their ships and resupply. The next year would send them through Indonesia, around the Cape of Good Hope, and back up the West African coastline. On the 26th of September, 1580, almost three years after he had departed, the Golden Hind arrived back into Plymouth, and several months later he was knighted. The popular story was that Queen Elizabeth herself personally went aboard the Golden Hind and knighted him. However, in reality, it was performed by a French diplomat, and this version, with Elizabeth, is thought to have come from the Victorian era to fit a more nationalist agenda. In 1581, he became Mayor of Plymouth, as well as MP for Camelford, and later, in 1584 and 1593, became MP for Bonnesey and Plymouth, although he rarely took his seat. He was also made Mayor of Plymouth in 1581, and implemented a water supply to the city called Drake's Leet. This was in use for 300 years. Perhaps Drake's most famous endeavour occurred in 1588 with the Spanish Armada. During the mid-1580s, the Netherlands were under Spanish control and Philip II considered the English support of Protestant Dutch rebels following the Treaty of Nonsuch to be an act of war. Desiring to return England to Catholicism, Philip launched 130 ships on the 28th of May, 
but in the time between the Declaration and the Armada, Drake had been active among the Spanish and American coasts, plundering Santiago and Santo Domingo, among others. In 1587, he led a preemptive strike against the port towns of Cadiz and Corona, destroying 37 vessels and delaying the invasion. Before the invasion, Drake was made Vice Admiral of the English fleet, with his cousin John Hawkins becoming Rear Admiral. His major contribution to the conflict is the infamous fire ships that were directed to Calais, forcing the Armada into open water and allowing the English to use their more mobile fleet to claim victory. More famous than that is the story of how Drake heard the Armada's launch. It is said that Drake stood here, upon Plymouth Hoe, while playing a game of bowls, when he was warned of the incoming Spanish fleet. He was said to have remarked that they still had time to finish their game and still beat the Spanish. This account is regarded by most as fictitious, but really shows how revered Drake was to the city and overall the country.